As Cap just explained now, this big swing in temperatures expect to uh, raise concerns about some flooding along their local waterways. Also, that can cause ice jams. There are steps crews can take to reduce the risk of flooding, and News 10 ABC's Anya Tucker got a close-up look at how they do it. If you live in Schenectady's historic stockade section, then you know all about flooding. Just ask Kevin Waite. I says, Kevin Waite, and still waiting and hope it doesn't flood. <laughs> little humor for you. It's that sense of humor that acts as an emotional flotation device for Kevin and his neighbors, lifting spirits when ice jams clog up the Mohawk River, causing flooding and damage. But hope is on the way with ice-busting tugboats. At Lock 7 in Niskayuna, we saw them plowing through and breaking up the ice in a section of the Mohawk that can become a real bottleneck. After lock eight, it hits this slow moving pool and it's sort of fast to slow and everything has to slow down. And that's one of the reasons, sort of geometric reasons we have the ice jamming here. Union College professor Dr. John Garver is an expert in ice jams. He's contributed his knowledge to the New York State Canal Corporation's efforts to find the best ways to mitigate ice jams and subsequent flooding. This is the second winter that the Canal Corporation's boats have been out here. When all this loosens up tomorrow, morning. What's going to happen downstream? Well, uh, hopefully what we're going to get is enough enough water in the river to flush it all down through the through into the Hudson. This is the Fisher Ferry Dam. A lot of this ice gets broken up as it goes over the dam, so it'll water level will go up, but hopefully we're going to be able to avoid flooding. He says the work can't completely eliminate flooding, but will certainly help. As for Kevin, he says he's prepared no matter what. Well, you know, I have a boat, so I'll just get in that and leave. You'd be like Noah. <laughs> exactly. Along the Mohawk, Anya Tucker, News 10 ABC.